now at 11. A very good dog with an important new job. Having this guy around is going to be very helpful for everybody. He's joining the Gresham police, not to sniff out crime, but to sniff out smiles. And it'll be a big change. A plastic bag ban goes statewide, and soon there'll be a fee if you forget. And later, was it a kidnapping caught on camera or all a hoax? and I was looking at people in New York City at Times Square, and you just feel like you're part of something so much bigger. All right, here we go. First tonight, from the East Coast to the West Coast, demonstrators calling for the president, President Trump, to be removed from office. The rallies come just hours before full House vote. Tomorrow, they'll be deciding on two articles of impeachment filed against the president. Now, we've got the latest for you from Capitol Hill, but we're going to start tonight with Catherine Cook and the demonstrators who showed up at Portland's waterfront tonight to speak out. Catherine? Well, Dan, a lot of people told me tonight that they thought this felt different than any other protest they'd ever been to. They felt more unified and focused on a singular message to lawmakers, impeach and remove President Trump. We call for the impeachment and removal of President Donald J. Trump. At Waterfront Park, some used letters to spell it out. Impeach! Remove! Others used fruit. Their message was the same. Impeach and remove. What else can we say? We know that what Trump did was wrong and that he must be held to account. They're calling this night Impeachment Eve. A nod to what Wednesday and the House of Representatives may bring. My hope and belief is that the House is going to vote to impeach the president. The House will be in order. The House will consider two articles of impeachment, one for obstruction of Congress, the other for abuse of power. Democrats say President Trump solicited the interference of Ukraine in the 2020 election. We know that there are crimes. Nobody is above the law, and we need to make sure that we say that with a loud, clear voice. What do we want? Impeachment. When do we want it? Now. Portland is among hundreds of cities holding so-called nobody is above the law protests, including Seattle, Phoenix, and Denver. And just seeing a bunch of people get together and say, we love our country, we love the Constitution, and I am not going to let my kids lose the country that I believe in. If the House approves either article of impeachment, the Senate would hold a trial. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell would be one of the jurors deciding the president's fate. He said he'd work with the White House counsel on how to proceed with the trial. That's not a fair trial. And so we'll be back out here when it's time for that, too. Hopefully we get some holidays in between, though. For now, they have impeachment eve. No one is above the law! <laughs> A look ahead at some of the guidelines for tomorrow. The House Rules Committee decided there will be six hours of debate before the final vote. Nearly every Democrat is expected to vote for impeachment and every Republican is expected to vote against it. Dan. All right, we'll see what happens, of course. Catherine, thank you so much. President Trump, meanwhile, is fighting back. He's claiming that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is abusing her power by going ahead with the impeachment vote. It look, it's a hoax. The whole impeachment thing is a hoax. Uh, we look forward to getting on to the Senate. Uh, we're not entitled to lawyers. We're not entitled to witnesses. We're not entitled to anything in the House. It's a total sham. So you might have seen that President Trump sent a six-page letter to Nancy Pelosi tonight demanding that she, quote, immediately cease this impeachment fantasy. He added more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials. Not sure what's going on here. Just driving through Battleground and... We had four or five units pull out, and they all stepped out, guns drawn. Our viewer, Julie, sending in this report tonight from Battleground. She came across this scene just as police were arresting a hit-and-run suspect who also fired a gun. Police tell us the man hit someone near SR 503 in Northeast 149th this morning. He's then accused of firing shots into the tires of a parked car. Officers confronted him on Main Street in Battleground, and that's what you're seeing here in this video. They recovered a gun. They also booked this man into jail. The person he's accused of hitting, by the way, is expected to be okay. If you see news happening in your neighborhood, do what Julie did. Help us tell the story. We appreciate it very much. You can send your video or photos to us at newstips at kgw.com or simply find us on Facebook.
Now we expect to learn more tomorrow about a Vancouver teenager found dead in the woods. Her family spent months pleading for help finding her. 17 year old Nikki Kuhnhausen was last seen June 6th. Turns out that she met a man on Snapchat that same day. Now police have arrested that man for her murder. Investigators say she arranged to meet him in person. Then the two got into a fight when he learned she was transgender. Someone walking in the woods near Larch Mountain discovered Nikki's remains 10 days ago. We're going to be getting a briefing from detectives tomorrow morning. We'll let you know as soon as we have anything new to update. An Oregon man wrongly convicted of manslaughter walked out of prison tonight. A criminal justice advocate who worked with the Oregon Innocence Project posted video of the release on Twitter late tonight. This is Nick McGuffin in court for the murder of 15 year old Leah Freeman 19 years ago. The case happened in a small town of Coquille near Coos Bay. It got national attention at the time on ABC show 2020. DNA evidence was withheld in the case and a judge overturned the conviction earlier this month. Today, the Oregon Innocence Project announced the state will not appeal or retry McGuffin. So he is a free man. All right, batting down the hatches, an atmospheric <laughs> river is headed our way. <laughs> Keely, that was in the prompter. I have no idea what an atmospheric <laughs> river is. So please fill us in. Well, it is pretty much what it sounds like. It is a narrow band of moisture, intense moisture in the atmosphere, and it is headed our way, and it's going to arrive tomorrow evening. Now, tonight, we're dry, just clouds overhead. We're at 38 degrees, but things start changing tomorrow. We have a slight chance for just some showers tomorrow morning. Nothing too intense, but yeah, the heavy rain arrives Wednesday night. That's and it extends through Friday. So we're talking about the heaviest rain falling in the north coast range, four to six inches in the Willamette Valley. We're talking two to four inches in the probably the heaviest rain here will fall Thursday night and Friday. As a result, we could see some urban small stream and coastal river flooding that'll likely happen Thursday night into Saturday. Again, we're talking minor flooding but we do have a lot of rain headed our way. We also have some fog to talk about. In fact, there is a dense fog advisory in effect uh, along the I-5 corridor south, uh, uh, pretty much south of Salem in, in the valley. Here in purple, that is a winter storm warning. So we have all sorts of weather to talk about. I'll get to that coming up after the break. Lots more in just a bit, yeah. Kelly. Thank you. Carry a reusable bag or pay a fee. A plan to widen I-5 gets delayed, and Amazon changes the game just before the holidays. Those are our three things to know tonight. Starting January 1st, at all stores across Oregon, this is not just Portland, you'll have to use a reusable bag or pay at least five cents for a paper bag. Grocery stores and other retailers are banned from using plastic bags. This does not include restaurants, though. This was a bill passed by state legislators last summer. We don't have to tell you, traffic on I-5 around the Moda Center is some of the worst in Portland. The state approved some money to widen the freeway, but today that plan was put on hold. Governor Brown requested this delay, calling for more studies on the traffic impact. She says the project needs to both reduce congestion and greenhouse gases. There's a chance that, that, could delay your, that something could delay your last minute Christmas gifts. Amazon just started blocking some third party sellers from using FedEx for shipping on Amazon Prime orders. Amazon FedEx's delivery performance, performance has been dropping. Some sellers are now having to switch to other more expensive services just to meet those holiday deadlines. The family of a 14 year old who died by suicide is now suing his school district, the county and 10 students. The lawsuit says bullying and racial harassment led to Deshaun Adderley's death. According to the lawsuit, he was one of only a few African-American students at Summit High School in Bend. Between September and December of 2017, his family says he was a target of bullying, racial discrimination and physical violence. Then several days before his death, this video here of a fight in the school bathroom was posted on social media. The suit says Deshaun reported this incident to the school, but the school didn't follow through with their anti-bullying policies. The family's attorney says they're hoping this lawsuit changes how bullying is handled in schools. Our, you know, our number one hope and the hope of the family is, is frankly for a, just to put the community and the students and the families of Ben Lapine in a better educational environment, you know, one that's free of intimidation. You know, the allegations of conduct that are in this complaint are not isolated incidents to Ben Lapine. These are things that are going on throughout Oregon and frankly, I think throughout America. So we talked to the school district and the county that both told us that they are reviewing the allegations made in the lawsuit.
If you or someone you know is dealing with thoughts of suicide, there are people available to talk 24-7. The number for the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is on your screen, 1-800-273-8255. The newest member of the Gresham Police Department has been chosen for his unique ability to comfort others. This is Tag. He was officially sworn in today. Brittany Falker shows us what he'll be doing on duty. Raise your right paw, your left paw. It's a big day for this two-year-old black lab named Tag. I, Tag, do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully and diligently perform the duties of comfort dog for the Gresham Police Department. Sworn in Tuesday. The newest member on the force. Congratulations, Tag, and welcome to the family. The new badge comes with an important duty. The goal of this program is to provide emotional support during and following traumatic events. Tag's priority isn't catching the bad guys, it's helping the good guys. The national numbers show close to one in four officers has thoughts of suicide, and compared to the general population, there's higher rates of depression, PTSD, and burnout. Said so this is a it's a very difficult job. We see some some bad things. We deal with people when they're in their worst situations um, on a regular basis, and. Um, having this guy around is going to be very helpful for everybody. Tag's handler already sees the sweet pup having a positive impact. Just people starting their shift. I've been taking him to roll calls at the beginning of shift. Everybody's just super excited to see him. Tag's duties will extend beyond the department. He'll also be a comfort dog for crime and trauma victims. Give it a kiss. At his debut, he made the rounds, showing plenty of attention and affection. Look at that tail, though. Tag was donated to the department from the organization Guide Dogs for the Blind. He was in training to be a guide dog, but something got in the way. Tags need to um, go outside uh, a little too often, uh, eliminated him from their program, so he decided he needed a career change. Lucky for Gresham Police, that brought him here, because these puppy kisses are a superpower for officers when they need it most. Brittany Falkers, KGW News. So bringing Tag onto the force has been in the works now for a long time, like more than a year. Thanks to generous donations, he was given to the department for free. And that included everything, food and veterinary services. In the next few months, he's going to be going through some extensive training, which has also been covered through donations. If you want to help with future expenses, we have a link for you to donate at KGW.com. Next, a frightening kidnapping caught on camera. Now police are saying it might have been made up. Plus, deputies dodge deer in Clackamas County. And later, rewarding good deeds with a trip to the vending machine. Why it's working in one Vancouver school. Hey, I want you to check out all the donations. This is all the stuff that this community has given to the KGW Great Toy Drive. Watch it all being packed up there. I love this fast little fast video here. Uh, we packed up all the toys today. This is the last day to donate, so if you still want to give, you can do so right now from the comfort of your couch. Just go to kgw.com slash toy, click on the Amazon button, and select the toy you want to donate from the wish list. It'll ship right to us here at the station, and we'll get it where it needs to go. You can also give cash online at our website, kgw.com slash toy. Thank you so much to everyone who gave this year.